How many times have you asked, what were they thinking? Or how many times has someone asked about you? What were you thinking? It's easy for us to judge, but we do have to stop and ask the questions. We talk about the whole idea of, of, the, of worshiping the golden calf. That whole concept seems so foreign to us. And how could they do so right after having received the, the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai? Like, what were they thinking? But a good leader seeks to understand before passing judgment. Who was involved? What was their goal? What was their motivation? Why now? Ask questions to better understand why good people might do something that seems so clearly wrong. So let's look into the words of the Torah. If we think back on the history behind this, so the Jewish people, uh, they know that they're going to be building a tabernacle because a, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had foretold the concept and Jacob had planted cedar trees or acacia trees in Egypt so that when we would leave Egypt and go out into the desert, we would take these with us because we knew we would have to build a tabernacle, a tabernacle for God in the desert. We also knew that there would be such as a concept as Kuruvim or the cherubs uh, in the English form, and that there would be some medium by which God would be able to speak with us in the tabernacle. Given the situation, Moses has gone up on Mount Sinai. He said he was going to be upon it for 40 days. 40 days has come and gone. He's not near here, and they panic because they're without leadership. And truthfully, it was only 39 days. Moses had said 40 full days. He went up the mountain in the morning of one day. That's not a whole day. They were counting that as a day, but it's not a whole day. And so, therefore, the 39th day came. They thought it was the 40th day, and they started to panic. There are other mitigating circumstances going on that we're not going to go into right now. Uh, but they panicked, and so they sought, what could we do to create that medium through which we would have this communication? And they weren't looking to build an idol at all. They were looking to build a leader. The word Elohim is the word that is used in the Chumash, but that word can be used as, far, as, a, as well as for a leader. In fact, earlier in Chumash, the great commentator Rashi explains to us that in an earlier context, that term is used as a leader and in reference to Moses. And so, therefore, we're, we're accustomed to that idea. So Rashi doesn't even worry about it here. So they're looking to build an intermediary communication, communicator, through which God would speak. Moses isn't here, but they know there's supposed to be a tabernacle. They know there's supposed to be Keruvim. In fact, there's even a Kabbalistic concept of the, the, um, the ox as the right side of the chariot on high. And so they know some of these things that have been passed down. So they look to create something that's going to be the intermediary. And it's easy sometimes to get the wrong idea and then it goes off on a wild tangent. You know, so it's the responsibility of leadership to explain the goals, to explain the context of the goals, and to communicate the parameters, the time frames, and the details to make sure people don't make ridiculous errors that then turn us to say, what were they thinking? Have a good week.